Hello and welcome, Summer Showdown fans. I'm your host, King L5, and today I'm going to be bringing you my SS Run, the Token Minority Summer Showdown tournament. And I know this is going up quite late, it happened a while ago, but uh, better late than never. So uh, let's get right into the first matchup of my pools. Going to try to keep this uh, to the point, but so the team I have for the first match up against El Scizor, uh, coach of the GBA peoples. Uh, so definitely someone who's been around in the format. Uh, you can see his draft right here uh, and mine right below it. Um, I'll go into my draft a little bit. Lando T was my first round pick because um, it's pretty much the best. Uh, I had the first overall pick in this, I believe, and I just went with Lando T. Uh, just because I really like it, especially in an 8-1 format. It doesn't really have counters, and with the Z moves it can just be so devastating. So next up I got Mega Diancy because I was planning on getting the Lando T Mega Diancy Volcarona core that, I was, that I've talked about in... Um, another video, but overall it's just impossible to wall these three together. It, they have amazing offensive synergy, although defensively they're all weak to water. Uh, we patched that up later on in the draft. But anyways, Mega Diancy is really nice. It gives me a fairy type, gives me magic bounce for the Volcarona I was going to get. Uh, it gives me a really strong mixed attacker that can really be tailored to whatever my opponent's draft is and can usually punch big holes in it can set up, give me a win con, that sort of thing. It's just really hard to deal with, especially in an 8 mon format, because, you know, those switchings are limited. Um, next up is my Volcarona, a standard Volcarona. Uh, if you know me, you know that Volcarona is one of my most drafted Pokemon. It's just a really solid win condition, uh, and I think I do use it quite well. Um, it's not my Z Pokemon, which I uh, I usually don't use Z moves a lot on this thing. I usually, but I usually like to have the threat of the Z move, and then I do occasionally bring it, of course, if it has a good matchup. So the fact that I don't have the Z move threat on this thing, but it's on Lando T, is a little bit. Um, I'd rather have both, to be honest, but we can't have everything, and Lando T is definitely the better Z Mon user. But Volcarona is just a nice win con. It can be a win con in about 80% of your matches, usually. But, anyways, yeah. Really nice Pokemon. Next up is Ferrothorn, uh, my favorite Steel type in the format to use. I know it's not really the best because there's uh, Celesteela that exists, but Ferrothorn is just my favorite to use. Um, it gives me a Grass type, gives me a Steel type, gives me uh, Hazards and Stealth Rock and Spikes, and uh, with just 8 Mon drafts, I really wanted to have a lot of roll compression, and Ferrothorn gives me a lot. Gives me um, really fat Pokemon to soak up hits. Uh, it's a good berry user, and um, I feel like in these uh, tournaments, you and like especially when you get to the parts where you ha only have 15 minutes to draft, which is going to be in the brackets, uh, having something like Ferrothorn, which can use berries really effectively, is really nice because in those short periods of building, you definitely want some surprises, and berries are a good way to get surprise KOs on things that would expect to take you out, for example. Like a Chopple Ferrothorn versus a Tapu Bulu, uh, for one example. But anyway, it's just a nice Pokemon in general. Uh, next up is my Starmie, because I do need some hazard root control with my Volcarona. Uh, it gives me, uh, again, a lot of roll compression. It gives me my Spinner, uh, somewhat bulky water, as I can run a fat utility Starmie with Recover. Uh, it gives me an offensive water as well, because uh, Life Orb Analytic Starmie is no joke. It can definitely... Uh, kill a lot of things. <laughs> it has amazing coverage and all that, and its typing is really nice on my draft as it allows uh, allows me to have another great water resist for my three offensive mons so far. And just generally it's nice. Reflect type is another option. I'm not sure if I actually ran reflect type at all in this tournament, but it's an option. Um, yeah, next up is Dragalge, one of my favorite dragon types to use in the format. Uh, poison and Dragon gives it a lot of cool resistances, including Water, which was a big one for this draft. Uh, gives me not a Fairy Resist, but it doesn't give me a weakness in my Dragon, so it's not too bad. Uh, this thing can also use berries quite well, particularly Sugar Berry, which I'm going to be using in this first match, as you can probably see on the screen. And um, 
Uh, yeah, Shookaberry is generally the best item on it, although Haban can be used. Uh, Black Sludge is also really nice, and Specs is another option. Uh, this thing has a lot of options, to be honest. It's pretty versatile, and you can kind of tailor, -made it, tailor the EV spread to your liking for any draft, or any matchup, I mean. But yeah, uh, apt adaptability uh, stabs is really nice. Adaptability Draco Meteor hits like a truck, even though it's only 97 special attack. Uh, it's just really strong. Next up is Hitmonchan, which gives me a secondary spinner, because I don't want Starmie to be forced to spin every single game. And Hitmonchan gives me a fighting type, gives me some priority, it gives me a nice specially defensive mon with an assault vest if I want to use that. Uh, it's just a nice Pokemon with some good coverage. And yeah, not really much else to say about Hitmonchan. Furfru is just because I had two points left over, I'm, I did not bring Furfru in any match. But it's just a cool Pokemon, like a normal type, uh, Cotton Guard, it's pretty fat with fur coat. I just drafted it because I thought it would be cool, maybe bring it to one match, but I didn't actually bring it to anything. But anyways, uh, let's get into the first matchup versus El Scizor. Uh, he has this draft right here, and let's go into my prep real quick. I have a Shookaberry Dragalge as it can take on a Dragon Dance Altaria with Earthquake. Pretty effectively, Sludge Wave is always going to knock that thing out thanks to adaptability. I'm always going to be able to take an Earthquake, and a Return would not be able to knock me out with my HP investment. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what these spreads are for because it was quite a while ago, but I'll do my best to kind of reverse engineer it. I think that might be for a plus one return, so nothing to knock me out. Um, Sugarberry also is multi-purpose for the Dawn fan, uh, as well as maybe a Hidden Power Ground Houndoom, I guess? Uh, that's kind of grasping at straws, and Dark Pulse hits me the same anyways, but uh, it does uh, allow me to take an Earthquake from Dawn fan, Tangrowth, and Altaria, so multi-purpose berry there. Uh, Toxic Spikes is really good versus him. He doesn't have a Grounded Poison type, so I can just lay those up. Thunderbolt is to hit the Skarmory, and after Rocks, it is a 2 at KO on most Skarmory spreads, and I'm, a I'm able to actually outspeed Skarmory, so I'm able to hit it while it's still a Flying type, as well as just outspeed uh, the Azumarill spread that I was expecting versus me, because I don't want to be outsped by Azumarill with my Dragalge, because... Um, I basically get knocked out by any hit that isn't Aqua Jet, so if I can outspeed that thing and knock it out, um, that would be great. I'm pretty sure that's what this special attack investment is for, to always one hit KO Azumarill with the Sludge Wave. I know the speed is for uh, what I was expecting is Azumarill speed to hit, and like creeping a little bit above that. But anyways, that's going to be my Dragalge. Next up is my Ferrothorn. And this is going to be Shed Shell because he does have a Magneton, which you could easily bring. And I do kind of want this to be around to check his Mega Altaria if it is physical. And his Dawn Fan, just that sort of thing, layup spikes. Uh, because his hazard control is uh, Dawn Fan, which I set up Spikes versus, and Skarmory, which can't touch me either. So that's pretty nice. Uh, spikes Power Whip. Uh, Power Whip is for the Azumarill, so I'm not set up fodder as well as just hitting the Dawn Fan really hard. Uh, Spikes is Hazards, Leech Seed is nice. Uh, Recovery and Gyro Ball is to hit uh, Mega Altaria, as well as Torn T. Uh, not really much else to say about Ferrothorn, it's just there to get up Spikes, uh, maybe throw off a hit, that sort of thing. Next up is my Lando T. This is going to be uh, Flyinium, Earthquake, Fly, Smackdown, and Stealth Rock. I am running an Adamant nature on this thing with enough speed for a base 70 max speed Pokemon. Uh, this is creeping the Magneton. Um, I have the Smackdown for the Skarmory as I can hit that with an Earthquake and do super effective damage. I can get up rocks reliably versus my opponent because uh, his Spinner doesn't beat me and his uh, Defogger doesn't beat me thanks to Smackdown. I mean his Spinner kind of beats me with Ice Shard but I mean, I do a lot of damage to it, and if it tries to switch in on the Earthquake, uh, depending on the spread, I can take it out with the Z Fly the next turn. Um, yeah, just a nice Pokemon to punch holes through his team. He doesn't have a great answer to Lando T, uh, as pretty much no draft does. But anyways, next up is my Volcarona. This is going to be Fat Volk, uh, max HP. 136 defense, 16 special attack with a modest nature, and 108 speed. Uh, the speed is for Magneton again. The defense, 
Um, if I had to guess, I would say it's to take a Aqua Jet uh, from a non-boosted Azumarill. Or, no, it's actually for a Brave Bird from Skarmory. I think I remember that's what this was for. I'm not entirely sure, but I definitely take a Brave Bird from Skarmory with this uh, investment. And uh, the 16 Modest allows me to one-hit KO Assault Vest Tangrowth at plus two. That's I remember that specific EV spread because I've used it multiple times in the past for Tangrowth. And it's actually also the same exact calc for a special defense of Celesteel, a fun fact. But Flamethrower and Giga Drain hits his entire team really hard, apart from the Houndoom, which is set up fodder for my Fat Volk, because I do have Roost. So that's going to be my Volcarona set. Uh, yeah, next up is my Hitmonchan. This is going to be Assault Vest with uh, max HP and 12 special defense, which allows me to tank a Life Orb Hurricane from Torrenty and knock it out with a Thunder Punch. Um, I also have the Focus Punch, which is some cool tech, because if Skarmory wants to come in to wall me, uh, Thunder Punch, if he's physically defensive, will not 2-hit KO, and he'll be inclined to click the Roost button, and if I click the Focus Punch button, he Roosts up, loses his Flying type, and then gets blown away <laughs> by the Focus Punch, Iron Fist boosted on that, and it's knocked down to Sturdy potentially, and then I can outspeed the next turn and knock it out with the Thunder Punch, or Drain Punch, whatever I want. Just a really nice tech there. I really wanted it to work because it would be hilarious. But yeah, this is my spinner for Volcarona because um, hazard control is nice uh, for a four times week Stealth Rock Pokemon. But anyways, uh, this coverage is decent versus his team. It's not the greatest, uh, but I did want the Focus Punch to potentially bop the Skarmory. As once Skarmory goes down, uh, that really opens up the door for my Diancie. So getting rid of that thing would be really nice. Speaking of my Diancie, let's get into it. Pretty interesting spread here. I have uh, a lot of HP as uh, his speed tiers are really whack. Like uh, Houndoom, I don't expect to be a Diancie counter. Uh, he's not going to bring that in on Diancie, and even if he does, I can tank any hit uh, pretty easily. And Houndoom, I don't feel like is coming. Um, but I am Rock Polish, Moonblast, Diamond Storm, and Hidden Power Fire. With this HP investment, I can Rock Polish up on a lot of things because I just have a lot of bulk. The 28 attack, um, I'm pretty sure that's uh, to Oko Tornadus T if it's Assault Vest with max HP. Uh, and then max special attack modest is for uh, just hitting things as hard as possible with Moonblast and Hidden Power Fire. Uh, this is potentially a 2 KO on Skarmory if it's not super specially defensive, uh, which is nice. And yeah, just a nice Pokemon in general. Basically, Assault Vest Tangrowth is going to be his primary switch into this thing, so if I can weaken that thing or just use it as setup fodder for my Volcarona, that would be really nice. Although, uh, Tangrowth can pack the Rock Slide for Volcarona, I do need to watch out for that. However, versus my team, I feel like he needs other moves. But yeah, basically going into this game, uh, the biggest threat is the Torn T. As with a Life Orb, I don't have any switch since I need to pivot around it really carefully. <laughs> but yeah, it can pack Iron Tail for a Diancie. Uh, Hurricane just hits pretty much everything else. Hidden Power Ice can hit Lando T. Uh, he can bring Knock Off U-Turn for Starmie. Uh, it's just really hard for me to switch into. And Heat Wave for Ferrothorn, so he has options. But anyways, that's going to be... Uh, my team for the first match. Let's get into the replay. Alright, so as you can see, he decided to bring Skarmory, the Torn T, Azumarill, Dawn Fan, Mega Altaria, and the Tangrowth. Tangrowth, I'm expecting the Assault Vest. Torn T could be Assault Vest as well. It could also be a uh, just offensive Pokemon with Life Orb. It could be. Uh, well, I'm definitely expecting four attacks. Could be uh, Expert Belt. Uh, could be really anything. It doesn't really need an item versus me, although Life Orb is what I was most fearing going into this game. Skarmory, probably especially defensive to take on Diancie. Uh, Azumarill, I was expecting Belladrum because it just has a nice matchup versus me. Uh, Dawnfan could be physically defensive to take on my Lando T with the Ice Shard, take a hit, uh, that sort of thing. Could be his Rocker, uh, if Skarmory is not his Rocker. Uh, priority Ice Shard. Mega Altaria, uh, not really sure why he brought that. The special set is definitely set up fodder for Volcarona. The physical set is checked pretty decently by my team. Uh, the most threatening set would probably be physical with Fire Blast as a third move to hit Ferrothorn, uh, and then return an Earthquake. 
could be kind of threatening, but not too threatening. Anyways, let's get into the game. It's been a while, so uh, not gonna, not sure if I'm gonna be able to remember all of my plays exactly. But I do lead off with my Diancy, as if he leads off with um, the Altaria, I can just throw off a Moonblast. He doesn't have the greatest Moonblast switch-ins. If he's a Salt Vest Tang, I can start weakening that immediately. But he does lead off with the Tornty, and I know for a fact this is going to have the Iron Tail, so I'm going to make the pivot into my Ferrothorn, and then I'm going to uh, pivot into my Dragalge on the Heat Wave. And I'm basically going to get my Dragalge in for free because he misses the Heat Wave, which is pretty nice. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my Toxic Spikes, as uh, they just go ham on this team. He has four Pokemon that get hit by them, Altaria once it Mega Evolves. Uh, and then he goes for the Taunt on my Dragalge, but I do outspeed and I'm able to hit him with a Thunderbolt, and it's doing a lot of damage. Um, he is able to roost this off, however, eventually I am either going to get a crit or a para. Both of those would allow me to beat down the Skarmory. So this is going to be a winning battle for me, and he's kind of forced to switch out eventually. I guess he could try to uh, get up a hazard, which he does here. He gets up rocks. But here, uh, he's risking crits, and that's not great for him. So I believe here he switches out. Uh, no, it's like the next turn, I think. But he is just going to keep roosting as I Thunderbolt, and I believe this is the turn that he switches out into Dawnfan. He takes the uh, Toxic Spike, and uh, if he's physically defensive like I expect, he's going to die to Draco, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, Trigalgy is strong. And now he goes into his Skarmory, because with the special attack drop, I'm unable to threaten this thing very much. So I'm going to go into my Ferrothorn, and this gives me an opportunity to set up spikes if I can, but he does go for the taunt. A good play on his part. I just went for spikes because I didn't really lose anything if he went for taunt, and may as well try. But here, uh, I'm just going to go for gyro ball in case he decided to switch out, but now uh, I'm just going to go into my land OT and I'm going to go for the rocks as it's just nice as uh, Dawn Fan was likely the hazard control, and since it's dead, uh, those hazards are going to be up for good. I'm going to go for the smackdown here. And right now, I'm going to pause uh, Skarmory, but will pretty much get to it killed by Earthquake, and that's not a good trade for him because Skarmory is pretty important for him to take on the Dragalge somewhat, and the Hitmonchan, and to an extent, the Diancy. So, uh, in my mind, he has two plays here. He can go into the Tangrowth, or he can go into the Tornadus Therian. Um, because Skarmory is just too important to sack at this point. And I have a move that covers both of those, and I'm just going to go straight for the Z-Fly and kind of stunt on him a little bit and knock out the Tangrowth upon switching. So that's another uh, poke, or that's a Pokemon that could have switched into Diancie that is now gone. So Rock Polish Diancie is looking pretty nice at this moment in time. I just need to weaken the Skarmory and the Azumarill a little bit. And uh, with my HP investment, uh, an Aqua Jet from Azumarill is only doing about 60-ish percent if he's not boosted. I, I'm pretty sure actually the investment was to avoid an Oko from Banded Azumarill. Uh, as crazy as that, as that sounds, I, I think that's what the Diancy spread was for. It might not be, don't quote me on that. But I'm going to go for the Supersonic Tri Sky Strike, take out the Tangrowth, and now he's going to go into the Tornadius. Go for the Heat Wave and actually fail to knock me out as I go for the Smackdown, just because I don't really have a better use for my Lando at this point other than to sack it off to the Torn and potentially get off damage. He reveals the Charty Berry, which is interesting. Uh, that was definitely for a Rock Polish Diancie to revenge it. But anyways, he's going to go for U-Turn on my Dragology. I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt, get a crit on the Skarm, which didn't really matter. It was dead. It was too KO'd after Rocks from that range of health anyways. And now he's going to go into his Altaria. I have the Sugar Berry, even if he's Earthquake, but um, if he is physical, I can go into my Ferrothorn and get up a Spike, which would be pretty useful for the Altaria and the Azumarill. However, he reveals he's special here, so I'm actually going to pivot out into my Diancie on the obvious Fire Blast, and he does actually burn me, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's not going to matter too much, as at this point I can just click Moonblast and get a kill. As I know, his Tornadus is not a Salt Vest, but here he reveals that Azumarill is actually a Salt Vest, and at this range of health, I can take a Aqua Jet most likely from this thing. I believe it might be a roll, but um, he's actually not going to go for it for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but he's just going to sack off his Azumarill, maybe banking on a choke. But here's going to go into his Tornadus, and here 
I have no use for my Ferrothorn, but Dianski is still somewhat useful as it can check the Altaria 100% of the time. So I'm just going to sack off my Ferrothorn as it loses to the remo remaining two Pokemon barring a Fire Blast miss, which I'm not going to rely on. But here I'm going to go into my Dragalge, and um, Sludge Wave unfortunately is not able to knock out the Tornadus 100% of the time, so I'm just going to go with the Draco Meteor, as even if he switches out and goes for the U-turn, uh, it doesn't matter, because Altaria comes in, is poisoned, it's immune to the Draco Meteor, yes, but I can go for the Sludge Wave the next turn, even if he's mixed with Earthquake, he's not able to knock me out thanks to my Shookaberry, and I knock out the Altaria, and now I can just sack off my Dragalge to the Tornadus T, and my Hitmonchan will live any hit, and I'm able to knock him out with the Thunder Punch. So unless he gets a crit here, uh, my Hitmonchan will win the game. He actually misses, so unless he crit there, and then he hit a Hurricane versus my Volcarona, and then hit an Iron Tail versus Diancie, uh, it didn't really matter. So he needed a lot of uh, luck to pull that back. Uh, but anyways, we're, that's going to be a 3-0 victory versus El Scizor, and I'll see you guys in the next matchup. Alright, and we are back with our matchup up against Rizzy Pow. Um, he is in the NPL Majors, and he was in my pool for uh, Summer Showdown, so let's get right into the matchup. He has this team of eight right here, and it's pretty interesting stuff. A couple of cool texts that I actually noticed he might bring is Sash Heart Swap uh, Mr. Mime. I believe it gets that. Uh, if not, then ignore this completely right now. But if he was Sash and was able to uh, copy my boost with Volcarona, that would have been really cool. But uh, that was just something that I was thinking when I saw this matchup. So we're, we're facing an, another Mega Diancy, as well as a Celesteela. Now in our pool, we faced three Celesteelas. Just <laughs> throwing that out there. But um, So he has a Celesteela, which is a huge threat versus any draft. Uh, mine is no different. Uh, Stone Edge can take care of Volcarona. Um, Celesteela can beat Lando T by itself, unless I'm SD Continental Crush. Uh, but I don't believe I am that set in this match. Uh, it just has ways to hit my entire team. However, it does have four Moonslot Syndrome versus me. Uh, he wants the Flamethrower for Ferrothorn. He wants the Heavy Slam. For uh, Mega Diancie, he wants the Stone Edge for Volcarona, he wants the Grass Move, be it Seed Bomb or Giga Drain for my Starmie. Starmie. He wants Earthquake for Dragalge, he wants Air Slash for Hitmonchan, uh, he just wants like 17,000 moves, but he can only have 4, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so let's get into the team of 6 that I decided to bring. First off, Volcarona. This, in my eyes, is the biggest single threat versus his team. I have Quiver Dance, Flamethrower, Giga Drain, and Psychic. The only thing that this can't really uh, beat down is the Arcanine, and plus one Psychic is doing a lot, uh, and I have ways to uh, chip down the Arcanine as well as just counters to it, it being my Dragalge, as Arcanine can't do much to Dragalge in the first place. So uh, I don't actually feel like Arcanine is the most likely bring in this matchup, so uh, that's why I'm not packing anything too special for it. Just Dragalge is going to be enough, as well as Starmie and Diancie can all kind of just deal with it naturally, as well as Lando T can just blow it away. But uh, anyways, Volcarona with a Quiver Dance 3 attacks, Charty Berry. Uh, this allows me to outspeed the Crocodile, as well as take a Stone Edge from a Scarf Crocodile and potentially set up on that thing twice. If I Quiver Dance up as he switches into it, and then he goes for the Stone Edge as I Quiver Dance again, then I'm at plus two, I can Giga Drain, get all the health back, and that's looking very, very threatening versus him. I am Psychic for the Toxpex, and Flamethrower just kind of, Flamethrower and Giga Drain just kind of hit everything else really hard. Um, yeah, just a really nice threat. If I can get this thing in a position to set up, it's definitely going to be a huge threat. Uh, next up is my Lando T, which is going to be Flying him again. Uh, same exact EV spread, same exact set even, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, just Earthquake, Smackdown, Fly, and Stealth Rock. Uh, Smackdown plus Earthquake allows me to threaten the Celesteela somewhat, and once I Smackdown Celesteela, he doesn't actually have a ground immunity, so I can just click Earthquake and guaranteed get damage on something. If it's the Decidueye and I decide to predict that, I can go for the Z-Fly. 
but yeah, it's just going to be uh, nice if I can catch the Celesteel with a Smackdown and just fire off an Adamant Earthquake from Lando T. It's going to hurt something. Um, yeah, not really much else to say about this thing. Uh, it's a Stealth Rocker that beats his Defogger, which is nice. Uh, next up is my Mega Diancy. Uh, once again, we are Rock Polish. Uh, three attacks uh, with Earth Power over Hidden Power Fire from the last time. Earth Power allows me to hit the Toxpex and uh, the opposing Mega Diancy, as well as uh, the Arcanine if he Intimidate drops me and he's physically defensive. Earth Power is probably going to do more than Diamond Storm, even though it's Stab. But yeah, Rock Polish, three attacks, just as a really nice win con versus his team. If I can weaken down the Celesteela, uh, it definitely can go in versus his team. Uh, just max speed, max special attack. Speed ties his Diancy as well as just hits as hard as possible with Moonless and Earth Power. Uh, that's pretty much all for Mega Diancy. Next up is my Ferrothorn. Uh, I'm not really sure what this spread does, but I'm sure it does something. Uh, if I had to guess, and I'm pretty sure this is right, uh, the special defense is so that I can take... Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, never mind, I actually don't remember what this spread was. I was thinking it was something with Hidden Power Fire from Diancy, but I have Yaka Berry. But uh, anyways, I have Gyro Ball, basically just for the Mega Diancy, as well as it's decent enough coverage versus his team. Knock Off allows me to remove items from the uh, Toxapex, the Decidueye, uh, the Arcanine, and the Celesteela. So Knock Off is really nice in this matchup, as a Celesteela without leftovers, if it's defensive, Celesteela is uh, way easier to deal with than a Celesteela with leftovers. So that's pretty nice. Leech Seed allows me to get some recovery, and Spikes just gives me hazards as I already have a rocker. Getting the Spikes up as well is really nice versus his team, as his only hazard removal is Decidueye, and I guess Magic Bounce, if that counts, which it probably doesn't. But anyways, uh, just Akaberry Ferrothorn. Uh, it can take an HP Fire from Mega Diancy thanks to the Akaberry. Uh, actually, I think the defense investment might be so I can live a Flare Blitz from Arcanine if I really need uh, to remove its item or get up a Spike or a Leech Seed on that thing. I can live. Just I didn't really have much else to do with the EV spread, so I just kind of did that, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, moving on to my Starmie, which is going to be Fat Starmie. Uh, fat Utility Starmie, at least. I am speed creeping the Mega Diancy, max HP, and the rest in Special Defense to take hits from the Celesteel a little bit better as I do expect a specially offensive Celesteel if he's going to run offensive and Giga Drain over the Seed Bomb as I can Scald Burn the Seed Bomb so therefore Giga Drain would be a little bit better. However, uh, Dual Stabs, Recover, and Rapid Spin is pretty much all I need to hit his team. Um, yeah, not really much else to say on the Star Moon, it's just nice. Uh, next up is Dragalgy and this is a pretty interesting set. It's three attacks substitute with Black Sludge. I have dual stabs and Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is going to be a common theme for this pool because everyone either has a Skarmory or a Celesteela, so Thunderbolt is coming once again. Substitute allows me to sub up versus the Toxapex in particular, which is his most obvious switch into this thing, as well as Celesteela. And with a sub up, I can basically get a kill versus his team, as Toxapex can take hits but it can't break my sub, and with my Black Sludge, I can basically just PP stall that thing out of Recovers, eventually, because T-Bolt has 24 PP, whereas uh, Recover only has 16. Uh, Mega Diancy dies to Thunderbolt plus Sludge Wave, basically any combination of two hits that isn't Draco Meteor, of course. So, uh, Celesteela is going to take a lot from Thunderbolts, unless it's like max special defense, which in case for that case, it's going to take about 40% which isn't too much, but it's a lot of chip damage that's really helpful for my Diancy, as well as Decidueye going, which it might tank two Sludge Waves, but maybe not a Sludge Wave into a Draco Meteor, although it can roost up, so it's not really uh, that big of a deal for it, but yeah, sub three attacks is just really nice versus team. If I can get a sub of versus Toxapex, I can definitely put in some work. But anyways, that's going to be all for my team, and let's get right into the battle. Alright, and we are back with our battle up against Riz, and as you can see, he decided to bring the Mega Diancy, the Toxapex, Decidueye, Crocodile, Celesteela, and Mr. Mime. So, no Arcanine, and um, so 
Looking at the team matchup, Toxpex is probably going to be Haze, Recover, Scald, or Liquidation to hit Volcarona harder. Uh, and either Toxic or Toxic Spy is probably Toxic. Uh, although he doesn't really need Toxic for anything, I guess. But, um, yeah. Especially defensive, probably to take on my Volcarona. Maybe Shookaberry to eat a hit from Land of T, something like that. Uh, Mega Diancie could be a win con of some kind, being Rock Polish or Calm Mind. Uh, Decidueye can be like physically defensive to take on a uh, Land OT that isn't Sky Strike, although I am Sky Strike. It, as well as it takes Diamond Storms from my own Diancie. Crocodile could be Choice Scarf, which could definitely uh, revenge kill my Diancie, as well as just threaten my team in general once Land OT goes down, because after that I don't have exactly a ground immunity. Next up is the Celesteela, kind of expecting a specially defensive, uh, maybe mixed defensive. If he's going mixed defensive, I expect max HP and about 180 uh, defense with a boosting nature, which allows him to take a plus two Continental Crush from my Land of Tea, even if I'm adamant. Uh, that's the spread I'm ex expecting from Celesteela in this matchup. Mr. Mime is a wild card, I don't really know what exactly it's going to do. Could be just... Um, Scarf or something like that. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to lead off with my Ferrothorn because if I can get up a spike early on, that would be super nice. And if he leaves with his Diancie, I can threaten that thing out immediately without having to switch in my Ferrothorn directly into it, which could, of course, pop my Akaberry if he does predict that. And then I kind of lose a Pokemon because two Hidden Power Fires uh, will be able to knock me out if he burns my Akaberry with the first one. So that's what I'm going to lead with Ferrothorn as he leads off with the Celesteela. Obvious flamethrower is obvious, I'm not going to throw away my Ferrothorn turn 1. In turn 1 he crits me, so already uh, very unfortunate stuff happening, but um, Starmie, I can just go for the Scald, fish for a burn. I do not get it, and he reveals the Giga Drain, but because of my max HP and 40 special defense, I'm able to uh, avoid the 2-hit KO from that, and I'm just going to recover up here. Now this Decidueye comes out, and I can go out into my Ferrothorn. As he goes for the Spirit Shackle, crits again, so we're just getting hacked out here. But here he reveals the Hidden Power Fire, which is really interesting. I'm going to go for a Spike, and uh, he goes for the Defog, revealing this is, and of course, his Hazard Removal. As I go for the Knockoff, it does a lot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spam Spikes. Now there's a very good reason for this. So if you look at Volcarona and look at his team, with a Spike up, uh, it guarantees that Diancie will go down to a plus one Giga Drain unless he's super fat, which I don't expect at all. Uh, guarantees to break any sashes. Uh, it guarantees that at plus two, I can Oko Toxpex with Psychic unless he's super spadef or Pyapa Berry. So getting up a spike is super nice for my Volcarona. And since I'm trapped in, the best thing I can do is go for a spike. Knockoff is not a two at KO. Here I gyro ball, and I think now is when I realize I can get up a spike and just set up with Volcarona after Pharaoh goes down. So I am just going to spam spikes as if he wants to try to PP stall me, it's not going to work as spikes obviously has more PP than defog. But here he's going to defog to get rid of two layers, so I'm only going to have one layer up. But now I put him in a situation where my Volcarona gets up to plus one as he attacks, and I have the spike up, or I get up to plus two as he removes the spike. Now you're going to see he decides to remove the spike which means my Volcarona is going to get up to plus two, and it's looking quite scary for him, to be honest. Uh, Spirit Shackle does about half, but I'm not willing to risk the roll on the next one. I'm just going to knock him out with a Flamethrower. As he goes out into his Crocodile, I am Chargy Berry with enough health to live even a Stone Edge from this thing. As he reveals, he is actually Focus Sash, which makes sense for why he was uh, so insistent on defogging there. But Earthquake is not going to kill me, and I'm able to uh, Giga Drain up to a health where... I will not die to the Earthquake earlier. So here, Mr. Mime takes 52 from Giga Drain. However, I did the calcs, and it's very possible that that could have been a higher roll, and 48, if I go for another Giga Drain, he could potentially live that, and like I didn't want to risk that, so I just went for the Flamethrower here. And now he sends out his Tox effects. Now, um, Psychic, if this thing is just a standard spread, has a pretty good chance to knock him out because I am plus two. So here, he's actually going to switch out into his Crocodile, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he did this to try to scout for a Shattered Psyche. However, uh, Volcaron is not my Z Pokemon, so I don't really... Like, I kind of understand the play, but it didn't actually make sense, uh, if that 
if that makes sense. Uh, his play kind of assumes that I am Z Crystal, which I am not because Lando T is my Z-Mon, but uh, it's easy to forget that thing when you're in the battle. And he actually reveals here that he's Assault Vest Toxapex with Liquidation, and he knocks me out. So that's that's definitely something new. But here, I can go into my Dragalge and get up a free sub, because nothing he has can break my sub. And he goes into his Celesteel. I have the Thunderbolt here. And since he's purely specially offensive, uh, he can't even break my sub, which is super nice. And that means that I'm going to be able to keep up a sub versus this versus this thing. Here I go for a Thunderbolt, and this next turn is when I realize I don't need to risk anything. Like, I can just sub up on his attack, and then I'm behind a sub, safe from Leech Seed, safe from flinches, so I can always have a sub up, unless he wants to sack his Diancie, basically. So, I'm going to sub up here, and basically, since Air Slash is a 2-hit kill on my sub, uh, basically all the time, because I am max HP, I can keep this sub up barring a crit air slash, and I can just Thunderbolt here. And because he is protecting, my Black Sludge is healing me up to a respectable amount of HP. While he is also getting leftovers, I'm also getting the same amount, so he's not really gaining anything in this exchange. So you can see his Celesteel is already at 36, and my Dragology is pretty much at full uh, right before I went for that substitute, and it's going to be near full after I knock out the Celesteel, especially if he keeps going for Protect. But anyways, uh, here, he actually switches out in his Tox Specs, and because this thing is Assault Vest, it's going to take no damage. However, also because it's Assault Vest, it doesn't have Recover, which means I am able to easily beat this thing 1v1. Ice Steam, not even going to break my sub, and I'm just going to go for the Thunderbolt again, knock him out. And now my Dragology is basically at full, and behind a sub, and it's looking very bad for him. Uh, he goes into Celesteel, goes for Protect, making sure that I'm at full. I'm going to go for Sub. And uh, I'm just going to sub again because his play is Air Slash, he doesn't have another option. And now I can just Thunderbolt pretty freely. And uh, he can't really do much besides hope for crit into flinch. And even then I have my Starmie in the back which is in a very prime position to win. As well as uh, my Lando T can take any hit from the Diancy that isn't HP Ice. Which I definitely expect HP Fire in this matchup for the Ferrothorn. So I kind of have this game wrapped up in the bag even if he haxes me, but uh, Diancy does come in, it's going to break my sub with the first Diamond Storm, I'm going to uh, go for the Sludge Wave, he gets a crit on my sub, uh, he, but he's not going to crit the next one, and we are going to finish off this match uh, 4-0, or with a 4-0 victory. Uh, even if he did crit my dry, my, da my Dragalgy there with the Diamond Storm, I did have the Starmie to guaranteed outspeed that thing, and knock it out with the Scald. So, that's going to be my game versus Riz, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, and here we are back with our match up against Daniki. Uh, you can see the matchup right here. He has this team right here, and we have the same team, of course. And let's get into the team of six that I decided to bring. Uh, first off is the Starmie, which is actually going to be offensive versus this draft, uh, Life Orb analytic with uh, just four attacks because it just kind of smacks his team really hard. He doesn't exactly have a switch into this thing. Um, he kind of needs berries or like just a super specially defensive Celesteela to take two Thunderbolts and even then I don't think it takes two Thunderbolts. Uh, he just doesn't have a great switch in. Uh, Mimikyu I guess if it breaks its disguise can take two. Other than that everything gets to it KO'd and outsped by this thing so definitely the biggest threat immediately that I saw in prepping. Uh, just speed creeping the Mega Gallade, and I'm running Psyshock over Psychic for Gallade because uh, even though Hydro Pump will probably do a little bit more anyways, Psyshock will do more than Psychic, and if I need something to hit, Psyshock is going to be a little bit better in that regard, as well as hitting Tentacruel on its weaker defense is pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's just there to punch holes while break a little bit. Next up is my Volcarona. This is actually going to be a set that I've actually never run before, uh, which is Charcoal. Uh, this allows me to one-hit KO uh, Mega Gallade at plus one, which without Charcoal I would not be able to do, and he could be able to run Rock Slide on that thing as a check to Volcarona as long as he keeps it healthy. So this kind of denies him of that option. It also is an incredibly favorable role versus uh, defensive Mew after Rocks with a plus one Fire Blast with the Charcoal boost. So that's pretty nice. I am just max speed 
uh, in case his tentacruel wants to go NASCAR fast to try to uh, speed tie with my Volcarona as well as Mew. And just Hidden Power Ice is for Dragonite, uh, Psychic is for the Tentacruel, and Fire Blast just hits literally everything else. And with the Charcoal Boost, I'm going to be doing a lot of damage. So that's pretty nice. Uh, not much else to say about that, it's just a good win con. Next up is my Choice Scarf Lando T. This gives me a check to Mega Gallade as I can intimidate it, outspeed, and knock it out with the explosion, which he might not be expecting. This is also gives me a plus one Dragonite answer, because at plus one, that thing is super scary, and I can go for the Stone Edge, or if it's out, out of range of Stone Edge, I can go for the Explosion, which does a little bit more, and will be able to knock it out after rocks. Um, just Earthquake in general is pretty nice, uh, versus Team Bar, the Celesteel and Dragonite. Uh, Celesteel I can U-turn on and go into my Volcarona, go to my Starmie to fire off a Life Orb Thunderbolt, that sort of thing as well as my Hitmonchan, which we'll get into a little bit later. But uh, overall, Scarf Lando T is a pretty decent bring in this match. It also allows me to check a Mimikyu if it's the skies is broken. If it's not, I can just U-turn out. But I am packing also another thing for the Mimikyu, which is the Ferrothorn. We'll get into that later. Next up is my Mega Diancie. This is going to be a physically offensive one. Uh, primarily with the Diamond Storm, Moonblast, Stealth Rock, and Sharpen. Now because my Lando T is going to be Scarf and I kind of need all four moves, I can't run rocks on that thing, so I'm going to be running it on Diancie instead of Ferrothorn, because on Ferrothorn I'm going to be using Spikes, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I do have the Sharpen, which allows me to break past a physically defensive Mew, allows me to break past Celesteel if it's weakened, and it's not carrying the Steel Stab, because as I've mentioned before, Celesteel does have 4 moves, Hot Syndrome versus me, it can't cover everything, so in the case that it doesn't have a Steel move, I'm able to sharpen up and to it KO that thing with the Diamond Storm. Uh, again, weakening it for the Land of T. Uh, just a physically offensive Mega Diancie is the best option versus Celesteela and uh, the Tentacruel, and just generally his draft in general. Uh, the 24 special attack is to one hit KO Mega Gallade with the Moonblast and then max speed the rest into attack. So that's a pretty nifty uh, Mega Diane C set sharpened. Uh, you don't really see that too much. Uh, next up is the Ferrothorn with a pretty interesting spread. Uh, if I remember correctly the physical attack is to one hit KO a Mega Gallade after it goes for close combat so it's at minus one defense and takes iron barbs. So at 88% at minus one, Gyro Ball will knock it out. Uh, the physical defense, I believe, is to just take a close combat or something like that. I'm not exactly sure on the defensive spread, but I know that's what the 12 attack is for. Uh, that's pretty much it for Ferrothorn. Akaberry allows me to take random fire moves, like a Flamethrower Celesteela. I can get a knockoff on that thing, or Leech Seed, whichever is more appropriate. Um, Akaberry allows me to take a Fire Punch from Dragonite as well, uh, as well as a Flamethrower from Mew if he's running that, so that's just kind of multi-purpose berry there. Uh, allows me to check Dragonite a little, bit better, a little bit better, as well as this Physical Defense and Gyro Ball allows me to take on Mimikyu. I think the Physical Defense might be so that uh, plus two Mimikyu doesn't uh, to it KO me, unless it's like a Life Orb, in which case it might. I'm not entirely sure on that calc. But Mimikyu is quite weak, so that does kind of sound right. <laughs> and then the rest in Special Defense. Next up is my last Pokemon, which is going to be Hitmonchan. This is going to be a pretty cool set. It's going to be Expert Belt with Max Attack Adamant. Uh, 224 speed allows me to creep, um, what was it, a defensive Mew? Uh, no, uh, a Max Speed uh, Jolly or Timid Celesteela is what I'm speed creeping with this. And then just the rest in HP because not much else to do with it. And Bullet Punch, uh, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Rapid Spin. No stabs on this Hitmonchan because I don't really need Fighting Stab versus Team. It hits pretty much nothing. Uh, besides the Furfru, of course, but Furfru is not a Pokemon. <laughs> and Bullet Punch is a nice priority for the Mimikyu. Uh, Thunder Punch can hit the Celesteela potentially for a 2 at KO. Uh, Ice Punch can Oko the Dragonite after Rocks and Rapid Spin is going to be my hazard removal. So that's a pretty cool set, and let's get right into the match. So here we see the matchup, and he decided to bring me Celesteela, Mega Gallade, 
uh, the Mew, Mimikyu, Dragonite, and the Tentacruel. So what I'm expecting this match, again, a defensive Celesteela is really nice versus me. Uh, Mega Gallade is probably one of the bigger threats, uh, hence why I prepped kind of heavily for it. Uh, kind of Sword Stance is a really good set versus me. Mew can pretty much be anything, however I'm definitely expecting the fast Ice Beam defensive Mew with Wisp, uh, Ice Beam, Defog. He might not have Defog because he does have Tentacruel to spin for his Dragonite, but uh, will o -Wisp and Ice Beam and Roost I think are definites on that Mew. Uh, maybe Flamethrower to take on my Ferrothorn a little bit better, or just Psychic Stab. Uh, doesn't really matter what that last move is, but anyways, the Mimikyu can be uh, Sword Stance, definitely. <laughs> what Mimikyu isn't Sword Stance, to be honest. Uh, just dual stabs and priority. Uh, this is pretty much all that Mimikyu does outside of a few random techs. But anyways, next up is the Dragonite. Probably going to be Dragon Dance, although it could be Choice Banded. Uh, I feel like Dragon Dance is a little bit more threatening versus me. Although Choice Banded would be able to punch holes. If he locks himself into Outrage, then that's a free Diancy. And if I am set up, which I am, I have Sharpened. I am able to set up on that and just kind of blow him away, so I don't feel like he'd be locked into something. Uh, next up is his Tentacruel, which is just going to be defensive with Spin, probably. Uh, Scald. Probably Pyapa Berry or Sugar Berry. Uh, Pyapa is a little bit more useful for him because it catches the Starmie, the Volcarona, and to an extent the Diancie because it can also run Psychic. Although, uh, Psychic isn't really too useful versus his team, it's, it's just another option. Anyways, let's get right into the game. I'm going to lead off with my Diancie, and he's going to lead off with his Gallade. Now this uh, is a pretty good trade for me, as I can go straight for the Rocks. and Because um, I definitely force out the Gallade, there's no way he's going to risk one of his biggest threats versus me turn 1 to a speed tie. And even then, I do, uh, I, I believe, live this close combat unless he gets like a max roll or something like that, and I knock him out with the Moonblast, so it's definitely not in his best interest to stay in there. So I do predict the switch out of the rocks, and now he goes, uh, I go into my Starmie on the Hidden Power Fire. He was trying to catch my Ferrothorn there. Here, I definitely thought he was going to switch out, potentially into the Celesteel to take the Psychic move, but he does stay in, leading me to believe he is definitely Pyopa Berry. However, um, he does go for the knockoff, removes my Life Orb, and now, uh, I'm just going to go for the Psy Shock, and he does reveal the Pyopa Berry, and we almost knock him out anyways, which is pretty crazy. Starmie's pretty strong, even though it's only base 100 special attack, but we are able to <clears throat> to it KO him. That means if that was his hazard removal, it's gone now. So now he's actually going to go into his Celesteel, which is kind of interesting, because I do have the Thunderbolt, which is pretty obvious on an offensive Starmie versus his team, but unfortunately it's not going to actually to it KO, and that's kind of important. Uh, it shows that he has a lot of HP investment, and he's actually going to go for the Autotomize. Now, the HP investment and Autotomize means that uh, he's definitely not offensive, or he's not speed invested. I know he has a lot of HP, so that's a lot of EVs gone. So, we're actually going to see in this next turn, he doesn't even outspeed my Starmie, which is crazy. But, um, I'm able to get off a second Thunderbolt, and he goes for the second Autotomize, and now... I can actually save my Starmie as a sack, uh, and I'm just going to make the hard switch out into my Hitmonchan, because even with his uh, uh, HP investment, he's in range of Bullet Punch, because I am Adamant Iron Fist, and he's barely in range, so that's pretty funny. Hitmonchan gets a kill, and now I'm just going to sack it off to the Gallade, as I don't have the greatest switch-ins. But here, I can go into my Lando T. Uh, pretty obvious that I'm Scarf. Well, I guess not obvious, but I could just be defensive, Yachi Berry or that sort of thing to take an Ice Punch, but it's in his best interest not to stay in, so I believe I just go for the U-turn on the Mew. Well, I predicted the Mew, but he actually goes Mimikyu, which is even better for me, because breaking the Disguise is super nice for me. And now I can go to my Diancie and fire off a almost max attack Diamond Storm, going to get a kill guaranteed versus his team, and I get the defense boost, which is really nice. Now he brings in his Mew, I'm going to go for the Diamond Storm, because as you can see it does a lot, and Shadow Ball is going to do very... Uh, little amounts of damage. Here I go for the Moon Blast, just not risking a miss, and now Gallade comes out. If He does win the speed tie, but because of my defense boosts, I'm able to tank that with ease and knock him out with the Moon Blast, and now Dragonite comes in, and it's also going to die to the Moon Blast, and that's going to be game versus Danaki. Very short game. Uh, Diancie just kind of went ham once he lost his Celesteela, 
and that's pretty much all there is to the game. <laughs> Not really much else to say. So uh, with that, we're going to move on to our last match up against John. All right, and we are back with our matchup up against John W. Uh, he is in the League Dependent Dependency server. Uh, really cool guy, uh, but uh, you see his team, very mean. Uh, the third Celesteela of our pools, and this is going to be uh, our last battle for pools. We are currently 3-0 with some positive differential, and it's a lot. But basically we've clinched the bracket rounds at this point, so I did want to kind of have a little bit of fun with this one. So, And you can already see from my Lando set, we're going to be having some fun. But... <laughs> So yeah, you can see his team right here. It is very, very good. Uh, Celesteela, of course, another one. <laughs> Latios is pretty threatening versus my team if it's hidden power fire for my Ferrothorn. Uh, Tangrowth is kind of a pretty good Diancy counter, as well as Lando T if I'm not Sky Strike, which I'm not. Um, yeah, Raikou, not the greatest versus me, but not terrible either. Uh, basically, these mods are kind of whatever, but these top three are definitely having a good matchup versus me. Uh, but anyways, let's get into the team of six that I decided to bring. I have my Lando T with the Z uh, superpower, and this is basically to counter lead his Pile of Swine. Uh, because at full, it's a very good shot for me to knock him out with the Z superpower. And if I can prevent rocks, that would be really cool. As well as knocking out Pile of Swine turn one would be really awesome. As well as, uh, if I get up a sword stance, the Z fight move does knock out Tangrowth and Celesteela, so that's pretty cool. Earthquake for the rest of the Pokemon, and then knock off for Latios, basically, and just Latios. Dusclops, I guess, as well, but uh, Earthquake hits that thing just as hard. Uh, well, not quite as hard, but pretty much the same. Uh, just max speed, max attack with the Adamant Nature. And uh, this allows me to speed creep his Blastoise. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's what it does. Unless he's like max speed timid, which in case I still might outspeed it by like one point. I'm not entirely sure on that. But uh, yeah, just Adamant Nature allows me to bop the Pile of Swine, Celesteela, and Tangrowth with the uh, superpower Z move. So that's pretty cool. Interesting set. And let's go into my Volcarona. Very fat. And you can see, once again, I'm running the 16 Modest Special Attack. That's to one-hit KO Celesteela at plus two with Flamethrower, if it's specially defensive. Now this set is pretty cool. I don't have the coverage for Latios, I know that. But I have the coverage for everything else, and I set up on Latios, unless he's Trick. And I don't expect Trick Scarf Latios versus me. Uh, if anything, it's Dual Stabs, Hidden Power Fire, and like Surf for Diancy. That's like the most likely set, and I set up on that for days. Uh, I have the leftovers, 248 HP, 20 defense, which is extremely fat. I can take pretty much any physical hit, uh, barring like a Conkelder Rock Slide. Uh, I believe I can take a Pile of Swine uh, Rock Move, Rock Slide, uh, pretty comfortably actually, and Giga Drain it all back. Uh, 24 speed allows me to outspeed his fastest things at plus one, which is going to be his Raikou, I believe. Uh, I believe I'm actually a little bit faster than creeping Raikou at plus one, not entirely sure what the speed set is for. Uh, it might be for uh, at plus two outspeeding Scarf Latios. That sounds about right, but um, actually, no, because Scarf Latios is faster than that. Anyways, um, just a little bit of speed to outspeed stuff. Uh, Quiver Dance Roost, two attacks, just a nice bulky setup sweeper. Next up is my Dragalge. Uh, this time I'm going to be bringing Toxic Spikes, three attacks, Thunderbolt making another appearance because of that Celesteela. Uh, just max HP, max special attack, and a little bit in speed to prevent speed creeping from a relaxed Tangrowth, potentially speed creeping a min speed Dragalge. Uh, no reason not to run a little bit of speed there. And just dual stabs Thunderbolt hits his entire team pretty hard. Uh, Toxic Spikes are really good versus his entire team, Bar Celesteel and Latios. Uh, just hits everything else, and I, some. I don't know, because, like, Celesteel and Latios are one of the bigger threats, and. 
but hitting everything else with Toxic Spice is definitely worth the uh, move slot. So that's why I'm running it. And next up is my Starmie, which is going to be pretty much the same set as versus uh, the other Celesteela versus Riz. However, this time I'm running Toxic over the Psychic move, uh, same exact spread actually. And this is to tank Giga Drains and all that, go for the Skull, potentially get a burn on things. I do have the Toxic to catch the Tangrowth upon switching and spin for Hazard Control. A pretty nice bulky set versus him. I do also learn the Blastoise for a Toxic, as uh, that thing on a Toxic timer is a little bit nicer for me, of course, than if it wasn't. As my only real switch in is Dragalge, and that doesn't have reliable recovery, so I do want to kind of chip that down if I can. Next up is my Diancie. This is a pretty whack spread. I'm not going to pretend to remember what this does, but <laughs> I'm sure it does something. Speed creeping Mega Blastoise because his speed tiers are pretty whack, uh, and I don't feel like speed tying Latios is something that is worth it. Rock Polish, Stealth Rock, Dual Stab uh, kind of hits everything really hard, takes hits because of the HP investment. Just a nice mod in the matchup. Next up is my Ferrothorn with the Akaberry, and I'm actually max attack on this boy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure why, but I am. Just wanted to have fun with this. I have dual stab, spikes, and leech seed. I believe max attack allows me to uh, do a lot of damage to uh, Blastoise and Pylosvine with the power whip, as well as potentially one hit KO the Latios after rocks with Gyro Ball. Uh, kind of still walled by tank growth. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my set. Akaberry is so I can take an HP fire from Latios. And that's pretty much it for my team. Let's get right into the game. Alright, so as you can see, he brought the Raikou, the Celesteela, Pyloswine, the Mega Blastoise, the Latios, and the Tangrowth. So looking at the team matchup, the Raikou could be just a Choice Scarf Raikou to outspeed everything on my team. Uh, could be... Uh, specs because uh, Volt Switch is pretty free versus my team. I'm not going to go into my Lano T on a Volt Switch because Hidden Power Ice exists and I'm not going to risk my Lano T unless I absolutely have to. Uh, Hidden Power Fire could be a thing to snipe my Ferrothorn upon switching as well as Hidden Power Ice to catch my Dragalge for some decent damage. But uh, overall Dragalge is going to be able to switch into that thing no matter what it is pretty comfortably. Next up is the Celesteela. Uh, already been over Celesteela a few times. Uh, Palace Swine could be his stealth rocker. I'm expecting it to be his lead of choice. Um, next up is the Mega Blastoise, which is probably just going to be offensive as my team doesn't have great switch ins to it. Um, maybe bulky with max special attack, like three attack spin, something like that. Latios could be many things versus my team, could be Scarf, could be Specs, could be Life Orb. Uh, Expert Belt even is the thing that it could run. Uh, just Hidden Power Fire stabs is what's kind of guaranteed for him to be running, I think. And Surf is very likely for my Diancie. Um, and uh, the Tang Growth, I'm expecting to be Assault Vest for my Diancie. Um, that's pretty much it. Let's get right into the game. I'm going to lead off with my Lando T, as he actually leads off the Blastoise instead of the Piloswine, which is... Uh, pretty unfortunate for me, and Dragalge is going to be forced to take a big hit here. And um, here he's actually going to go for the Dark Pulse again, and I go for the Draco Meteor, gets 64% off, which is honestly not a lot less than I expected, which means he's definitely uh, he definitely has a lot of HP investment. But now I can go to my Diancie, guaranteed out speed, and go for the Diamond Storm, I believe, as uh, Tangrowth comes in, reveals he is definitely going to be Assault Vest from that damage. And here I'm going to go into my Ferrothorn to get up a Hazard as he actually doubles into his Blastoise, which is a nice play. However, I'm going to be able to knock that out with the uh, Power Whip. Now he's going to go Celesteela, and I'm going to go into my Starmie as he's actually going to Autotomize up. And here he's going to reveal some pretty hot tech, and he's going to reveal the Metal Sound. And I go for the Recover in case he was Supersonic Sky Strike, because if he was, he could 2-it KO me with that into an Air Slash. So I wanted to kind of waste the Z move if I could but the Metal Sound is going to put me in a range where I'm going to die to that. So I'm forced out into my Ferrothorn as he gets a crit or slash. Doesn't matter, it was 2 killing anyways. Gets another crit, <laughs> doesn't matter. And he gets the special attack boost and the game is pretty much over. <laughs> because I have nothing to revenge this thing. He still has the Z move intact 
It's going to use it on my Lando T, and that's going to be game, because Celesteel is just going to uh, steamroll through my team as he does pack the Flash Cannon for my Diane C, and Air Slash is going to hit everything else, and that's going to be the game versus John. Uh, <laughs> really nice prep with the Celesteel. I can't even be mad. That was pretty smart prep with the Metal Sound. And that's pretty much all I can say about this. I'm very glad that I clinched the brackets rounds before this happened because this was a beatdown. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we can not face any more Celesteelas in the bracket rounds. But anyways, that's going to be all for my pools. We did uh, make it to the bracket round, so I'm going to see you guys with my 15 minute prep versus my round one opponent in a bit. All right, so here we are with our top 32 match. Uh, so because I was in an all-star pool, I actually got a bye in the first round of the brackets, so we immediately move on to the top 32 cut. And unfortunately, uh, we're going to be facing our good pal, Dougie. <laughs> so that's very unfortunate that one of our runs has to be cut short uh, so early into the tournament. However, um, since he's my friend, uh, I'm not going to be holding back. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely trying to win, but um, you see his draft, it's very threatening. Uh, Zygar 50% is really strong, uh, just in general, and versus my team, uh, I do have one of the better checks to it being my Lando T, and Ferrothorn to an extent, although Ferrothorn can be set up on by the coil set. Uh, yeah, it's pretty threatening versus my team, especially if he gets a Dragon Dance up, it can outspeed and uh, KO my Diancie, Volcarona, uh, Starmie, Drugalgy, that sort of thing. Uh, it's pretty threatening, especially with his Z-moves. Uh, he has the Mega Diancie, Ferrothorn, Starmie, uh, so he has a lot of the similar Pokemon from uh, my own draft, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, let's get into the team of six that I decided to bring. So. First off is the Culberberry Starmie. Now Culberberry serves a few purposes here. It allows me to take a Scarf knockoff from Blaziken, uh, takes a knockoff from the Torn Eye, and takes the Dark Pulse from the Greninja. So Culberberry is a really nice item. Analytic, even though I do outspeed the majority of his team, uh, ex everything except for the Starmie and the Greninja basically, and Starmie I speed tie. Analytic is the ability of choice here because uh, if he switches out, I do get the analytic boost, and that's really nice. So uh, these attacks just kind of hit his team super hard. I don't have the Ice Beam for the Zygarde 50%, 50 but I know that Dougie is not going to risk his Zygarde versus a Starmie because Ice Beam is a very real possibility, and I know that he will respect that. Uh, Thunderbolt just hits uh, Starmie, the opposing Starmie, and the Torn Eye for some really nice damage, as well as the Greninja, which would otherwise wall me. Scald is a nice stab versus Diancy. Uh, can get a burn versus Zygarde if I really need to. Blaziken, uh, just generally nice stab. Uh, Rapid Spin is going to be my hazard control, even without recover. And an offensive spread, I am able to spin somewhat reliably versus his team, as his only hazard uh, setup Pokemon is Greninja for spikes and Ferrothorn for rocks and spikes. Now, Ferrothorn, I have the Hidden Bar Fire for. Greninja at the Colorberry Thunderbolt, so neither of them really 1v1 me per se. But um, yeah, so this set is going to be what I'm bringing versus him. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but this prep was all done in 15 minutes. Uh, realistically, about 12, because I took a few minutes at the end to just look over the team, see if I was weak to anything, uh, make a little bit, a few last minute adjustments, but the bulk of this team was built in about 10, 12 minutes. Uh, next up is my Volcarona. This is going to have a lot of HP investment, um, max special attack, modest nature, which allows me to at plus one Oko the Mega Diancie, as well as just uh, Oko a lot of things on this team. Uh, Quiver Dance, three attacks, Flamethrower, Giga Drain, Psychic. I really wanted to be able to fit Hidden Power Ice on this thing for the Zygarde, but unfortunately I was unable to do so. Uh, Flamethrower is for just nice stab versus his team. Uh, very powerful move, especially coming off of Max Special Attack Modest Full Corona. Giga Drain is there for the Mega Diancie, the Starmie, and the Greninja. Uh, I Oko all three of those at plus one. And Psychic is there for the Blaziken, which he could definitely bring as a check to Volcarona. Now I am Lumberry. 
And the reason for this is because if he brings Ferrothorn, I know for a fact that it's going to have Thunder Wave to try to prevent Volcarona from setting up for free on it. Or at least it should have Thunder Wave in my opinion. But um, Lumberry allows me to set up, set up on that thing with no fear whatsoever. Uh, the only rock move that Ferrothorn gets is Rollout, which is just going to bounce off. Uh, and this special, or uh, this uh, HP investment allows me to take quite a few hits. And yeah, this is just my Volcarona spread versus him. Next up is my Lando T. We're going to be running the defensive spread this week to kind of have a really nice switch into Zygarde 50%. Uh, that's pretty much all that this thing is good for. However, it's very good at that, and I do definitely need a Zygarde switch in on my team. Uh, this is pretty much just standard what you'd see in OU. Uh, with, well, I guess in OU the offensive Z move set is a little bit more popular, but defensive Lando, this is pretty much as standard as it gets. Uh, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, U turn, and Hidden Power Ice. Hidden Power Ice obviously is for the Zygarde, as well as just hitting his flying types like Torn Eye. Um, well, basically just Torn Eye. And Earthquake is there for stab to hit literally everything else. And U turn is for momentum to maybe get momentum into my Diancy, into my Starmie to start punching holes. But yeah, Stealth Rock, uh, this is going to be my most reliable Stealth Rocker. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be it for my Lando T set. It's just a nice defensive set versus him, and I will be able to check the Zygarde even if it's Choice Banded. Uh, next up is my Dragalge with the Shikaberry, because if my Lando T gets weakened by switching into Zygarde multiple times, I do want a secondary answer to that thing, since my Starmie doesn't have Ice Beam. Uh, Shikaberry Dragalge is going to be my second check to Zygarde 50%. As even if he's Dragon Dance and get up, gets up to like plus two, I can take the Thousand Arrows, and I don't expect him to go for an Outrage versus Dragalge because then Diancy comes in and revenges. Um, he could, of course, be the Z Dragon move, but uh, in that case, he'd have to break through my Lando T, and if he's Z Dragon, he's going to be using that on Lando T to break through it. So, yeah, just max HP, max special attack, Draco Meteor, Sludge Wave, Hidden Power Fire for the Ferrothorn, and Toxic Spikes because. Uh, he doesn't have much for Toxic Spikes. It hits almost everything on his team, and he doesn't have the greatest way of removing it too reliably, apart from Starmie. But I know that uh, he definitely prefers Offensive Starmie to Defensive Starmie. So I don't even expect Spin on that thing, since he doesn't have the greatest Hazard weakness. But anyways, uh, next up is my Ferrothorn, which is actually going to be Max Special Defense with the Akaberry. This gives me basically my best possible check to Mega Diancy as well as the Torn Eye. Uh, I can take a Heat Wave, I can take a Hidden Power Fire from those two. Uh, Blaziken, I'm not sure if I can take a Flare Blitz. I think I still die, even with the Aquaberry, since I'm not physically defensive. But anyways, I'm able to uh, kind of smack his team with this a little bit, because uh, you see that third move, it's Swords Dance. Now this is a really cool tech to make sure that my Ferrothorn is not set up fodder for the Zygarde 50%, as I can Swords Dance up and then Gyroball is going to be doing easily over half. Even if he starts setting up the coils, I can definitely uh, boost up faster than he can boost up his defense, and I'm able to 1v1 that thing pretty reliably, even though I'm not physically defensive. And then I have Leech Seed for recovery, because I kind of need recovery on Ferrothorn for it to be super effective. Uh, but yeah, it's Dual Stabs, Sword Stance, Leech Seed is going to be my set. And yeah, moving on to my last Pokemon, it's going to be the Mega Diancy, very standard spread here. Uh, just running Max Speed, Max Special Attack, with Moonblast, Hidden Power Fire, Rock Polish, and Diamond Storm. So pretty standard, uh, Hidden Power Fire is for the Ferrothorn, of course, and then Dual Stabs just kind of hits everything else really hard. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say for my team. Uh, that's yeah. I'm gonna get going to move on to the actual battle now. So here we are with the game up against Dougie, and you can see he brought the Torn Eye, the Greninja, the Zygarde, fifty percent Starmie, Ferrothorn, and Mega Diancy. Uh, what I'm kind of expecting is an offensive four attacks, Tornadus, maybe even Prankster Tailwind, uh, three attacks, but definitely an offensive one, uh, as it does kind of destroy my team. Although not quite in the same sense that Torn T does, because Torn I doesn't outspeed everything uh, the way that Torn T does. So it's a little bit less of a threat, but it's also a little bit stronger. So it's kind of a trade-off. Next up is his Greninja. Kind of expecting just an all-out attacker, maybe spikes 
if he doesn't want to run spikes on Ferrothorn, maybe get spikes on Greninja and rocks on Ferrothorn uh, to kind of just chip away at my team a lot because Starmie is not able to spin super reliably as Ferrothorn just kind of comes in on that, but I am packing the HP fire, but in his mind it could easily be a switch into Starmie. But anyways, uh, could be spikes attacking Greninja or just four attacks. Zygarde can be either Choice Bandit or Dragon Dance uh, or Coil. Or even like uh, Double Dance because Thousand Errors is all he really needs to hit my team. He could be mono attacking Double Dance sub, uh, which is a set that I've run in the past and I feel like it's pretty effective versus my team as well uh, if he can weaken my Landorus. Next up is the Starmie. I, I expect offensive Starmie because I know he just loves that set and it's not bad versus me so definitely can see that coming. Ferrothorn is just going to be defensive, hazards, uh, kind of annoying, leech seed, thunder wave, that sort of thing. And Diancy could be rock polish to outspeed everything on my team, or just calm mind to kind of punch holes. Definitely going to be HP fire for my Ferrothorn. But yeah, let's get into the game. I'm actually going to lead off with my Dragalge as he leads off with the Torn. This is a good matchup for me, and I'm actually going to go for, straight for the Draco Meteor, because if he went for the Hurricane and I went for anything else, I kind of just lose a Pokemon, and that's not good. So he goes into his Ferrothorn, and he actually doubles into his Zygarde. Now, even though uh, I am Adaptability, Max Special Attack, Modest, I am unable to knock out this Zygarde with the Draco Meteor because I am at minus two, uh, but I do get up the Toxic Spikes, which is really helpful for me. Fortunately, I do have my Defensive Landorus chilling in the back, I'm able to switch into this thing pretty effortlessly as he reveals that he's not choice banded. And because of this damage on the HP Ice, as well as the Toxic, he reveals that he is a super fat uh, Dragon Dance Toxic variant of Zygarde. And this next turn, he's actually going to reveal the Protect, which is really cool. Uh, so that means that he could have Toxic Spikes on the Greninja, because Toxic Spikes plus Protect Zygarde is a really, really good... Uh, combination. So if he's able to get rid of my Dragalge, lay up Toxic Spikes, this thing is a huge threat. Uh, but anyways, uh, here I'm actually going to go for the U-turn once again as I felt like it wasn't in his best interest to stay in, although he definitely could have. I do have ways of dealing with this uh, by going into my Ferrothorn. Now here, uh, here's a play that kind of, I'm, I'm alright about it. So since he's super fat, Gyro Ball probably is not going to knock him out from uh, the range of health he's at. So uh, in my mind, I have no reason not, go, not to go for the Swords Dance, because he could just go for the Protect to get a little bit more leftovers, kind of scout what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Swords Dance, and uh, basically he's going to go for a Thousand Arrows, does 33%, even though I'm zero defense investment, uh, it still does very little damage to my Ferrothorn. I set up the Swords Dance, and now Gyro Ball is going to knock out something, and it's going to be that Zyger, which is great for me. He goes into his Torn, goes for the Heat Wave, and even though I am Akaburi Max Special Defense, it is going to knock me out pretty easily. And here I'm going to go into my Starmie. I'm just going to fire up the Hidden Power Fire, predicting this Ferrothorn to come in, popping the Akaburi, and I'm able to 2-it KO that thing upon switch in, basically denying him hazards versus my team. So that's really nice. He goes into his Greninja, and I actually outspeed with a Thunderbolt. Now, because we only have 15 minutes to prep, it's very understandable to make speed creeping errors. Uh, I am just max speed to uh, speed tie opposing Starmie. However, he is going to the, go for the Ice Beam anyways, so even if he was max speed, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a difference. And uh, since he did actually go for the Ice Beam rather than the Dark Pulse, I still have my Culverberry intact, so I can take a knockoff from the Torn Eye potentially. However, uh, I'm just going to go for the Thunderbolt here because... Um, you know, he actually said in the chat that he thought that def that my Starmie would be a more defensive spread, so I'm thinking, well, that means that this Starmie might also be uh, not max speed if he's anticipating a slower Starmie. And because I outspeed him on this first turn, I'm like, okay, that could be uh, what he is. He goes for the power gem here, uh, as it's probably just his best move to hit me, and now he's at 11%. He's going to die to the poison uh, no matter what but I feel like it's in my best interest to just uh, go for Thunderbolt as if I outspeed, I basically just clean up with my Starmie here. I guess Torn can probably take one Thunderbolt, however, getting off a lot of damage on that thing is super nice. Putting it in range of uh, my Dragalge's Sludge Wave means that Dragalge would get a kill after that, and then basically he would only have one Pokemon left, and the combination of my four Pokemon remaining 
uh, after Starmie goes down would be more than enough to take on his last Pokemon no matter what it is. But here's actually going to reveal that it is a speed tie and he outspeeds me. So here I see uh, his remaining two Pokemon are Torn Eye and Mega Diancy. So I'm just going to go straight into my Volcarona. Now that's because it loses to Diancy. Or no, I don't. I go into my Lando T. And he reveals the HP Ice. So, so far he's revealed uh, Heat Wave and Hidden Power Ice. Uh, I'm expecting the Steel move for my Diancy. And as well as like a knockoff for my Starmie or a U turn for Starmie. Something along those lines. He has uh, four moves off syndrome on this thing, basically. So, uh, basically, even if he's max special attack Hurricane, I do have a chance to live it. And it's a very good chance, unless he's like Expert Belt or something. So, unless he's Expert Belt, I live this Hurricane uh, about 70% of the time. And that's before factoring misses. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to go into Volcarona. It it loses to Diancy no matter what, so this is my best use of Volcarona anyways. So just trying to maybe set up versus the Torn T. And I'm going to take that opportunity as he reveals the Smackdown over the Hurricane. And I'm actually able to get up the Quiver Dance and the plus one Modest Flamethrower is able to one hit KO the Torn T. And the Giga Drain is able to one hit KO the Mega Diancy and that's going to be game versus uh, Dougie and I do pull out the win and we move on to the round of top 16 so I'll be right back with that match all right so here we are with our top 16 match up against trip and you can see his uh, team right here he actually only has seven Pokemon because he ran out of points before getting the eighth one which is kind of funny uh, I don't think anyone else in the entire tourney only drafted seven mons and he made it to top 16 so that's pretty cool for him but uh, we're looking to end his uh, end his run here and make it to top eight after this game. Uh, and you can see his draft; it's pretty threatening. It's got some cool stuff, and then Avalog. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, let's get into the team of six that I decided to bring. Uh, we have Lando T with the Rockium uh, with just Edge Quake coverage, and then du Double Dance. Now this thing is Max Attack Adamant, and the speed investment is so that I can. Uh, outspeed uh, Scarf base 100s being his Victini, Shaman, and Salamence at plus 2. So uh, Scarf Victini is something that I thought was very likely versus me, so I definitely wanted to be able to outspeed that thing after a Rock Polish. And then uh, with a Sword Stance and a Rock Polish up, I kind of just uh, kill everything with a combination of Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Continental Crush. Uh, at the very least, it can punch big holes in his team. Uh, just a nice win condition that I saw immediately while building. Next up is my Dragalge, which is going to be a very familiar set. Uh, Black Sludge, 3 attacks, Substitute. Now we see that Toxpex once again. And that means we can run Substitute Dragalge as nothing besides Toxpex wants to come in on my stabs. Not one thing. So basically if I can get up a sub versus Toxpex, uh, as I've explained in the previous matchup versus Toxpex, I basically get a kill because Toxpex can do nothing to threaten me, and everything else just dies. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, just max HP, max special attack, nothing too crazy about the spread. Uh, just allows me to hit things really hard and be pretty bulky. This allows me to get another check to Tapu Koko, uh, gives me a check to Shaman, gives me a thing that can take at least one thing from the Fatini. Uh, basically a V-Create and Bolt Strike answer, although a Psychic Stab move would definitely hurt. I can take one unless he's like Choice Banded. Uh, Crocodile would be able to threaten this thing with an Earthquake. Avalug just gets Oakwood after Rocks by Draco Meteor. Salamence can definitely threaten me. Uh, however, I'm able to knock that thing up with a Draco Meteor, at least threaten to. So he can't really set up in my face without fearing a Draco Meteor, which will do a lot of damage. Now, uh, next up is my Ferrothorn. Now this is going to be a pretty nice spread. Not really sure what it, exactly it does, but it probably does something. Uh, if I had to guess, it would be so that Tapu Koko's Hidden Power Fire doesn't do a KO, but uh, that's just uh, speculation. I'm not exactly sure on that calc. But anyways, leftovers with a uh, very defensive spread. Uh, it's going to be a nice Stealth Rocker, as since Lando T isn't Stealth Rock, uh, Pharaoh is going to be Stealth Rock, and Diancy has better things to do in this matchup. I have Knockoff and Gyro Ball as my two attacking moves, and Leech Seed. 
Um, basically, knockoff allows me to uh, get rid of the Victini's scarf, uh, just get rid of the Toxpex's black sludge potentially, get rid of uh, an item on Coco. It's all very useful stuff. Uh, Leech Seed, his only Leech Seed immunity is Shaman, which can't really touch me, so that's pretty nice. I can't really do too much back to it either, but I can knock off its item, go for Gyro Balls, do some damage, be annoying. Uh, Ferrothorn is very good at being annoying versus Drafts. Uh, just going for Leech Seed and kind of, whip, uh, kind of uh, whittling everything down. So this also gives me a nice Salamence answer. I believe I take a plus one Fire Fang, so that's pretty cool. I obviously don't take an Inferno Overdrive because even though this thing, uh, even though this thing's most likely severs to me, I feel is Supersonic Sky Strike. Uh, Inferno Overdrive could definitely come just for my Ferrothorn, so that's uh, just something to note. Uh, not much else to say about Ferrothorn. Next is my Starmie, which is going to be Choice Scarf. This gives me a check to plus one Ments. I'm able to go Modest, which is really cool, as I still outspeed his base 100s, and he has a really big speed gap from Tapu Koko down to uh, his base 100, so I can afford to go modest on my Scarf Starmie, which is really cool. I have the Analytic, even though I'm going to be outspeeding pretty much everything bar a Scarf Coco, which I definitely don't expect versus my team. Uh, analytic just allows me to nail things on the switch in. Uh, basically, if I can predict correctly, this thing can get a kill uh, pretty much every time, or at least heavily damage something with an Analytic hit. Or just revenge kill something like a plus one mens, a Scarf Victini. Uh, if he leads off with a Scarf Victini, or like we get into a situation where Starmie versus Victini, he's probably gonna go for the U turn or the Bolt Strike. I can just knock that thing out with a Hydro Pump, which is really cool. Uh, it's a nice lure for that thing, as well as it just hits his team pretty hard. And it is going to be my spinner because Hitmonchan does not have the greatest matchup in this game. And I wanted Scarf Starmie, so Scarf Spin is gonna be there. Uh, just in case he's able to get up a, a Toxic Spike or a Stealth Rock with the Crocodile and Toxpex. Although Toxpex, setting up a Toxic Spike, I do have the Dragalgy to absorb that. But anyways, uh, Scarf Spin is nice to remove rocks for my Volcarona, which we're going to be getting into later. Next up is my Diancy. This is going to be Calm Mind 3 attacks versus his team, as I can Calm Mind up, and basically, unless his Coco is physical, which usually physical Coco is Z-move with Wild Charge because otherwise you're just taking a lot of recoil. So I definitely expect a special Coco, especially since a Hidden Power Ice is something that he definitely needs for Lando T. And a physical Coco won't be able to uh, hit my Lando T very nearly as hard. However, anyways, uh, Calm Mind 3 attacks allows me to kind of break through Toxapex with a plus one Earth Power. Uh, it allows me to uh, one hit KO a lot of things on his team at plus one. Uh, pretty much everything. This also gives me a nice uh, fire resist to pivot into versus Victini, as uh, Starmie is not going to be appreciating V Create nor is Dragalgy. However, Diancy does have a nice defense set, so it is able to take V Create somewhat comfortably. Uh, I definitely don't get to it KO'd, which is nice, and I'm able to switch in on that if I predict that correctly, and then I'm able to outspeed the next turn because I am creeping the base 100s, and then the rest is just thrown into HP. Thus, my Diancy set can definitely wall break, uh, but now we're going to go into a win condition that I kind of came up with last minute, and I think it's really cool versus this team. It's Focus Sash Volcarona with Swarm. Now this is really cool. Uh, this is probably the first Volcarona in a long time that I've run without Fire Stab, because Fire is generally super spammable, but versus this team, I don't need it. All I need is Bug Buzz, Psychic, and Hidden Power Ice to hit his entire team really hard. The only thing that Fire Move would be better for is Tapu Koko. However, if I get up to plus one and I'm in Swarm range because of my Focus Sash, a Bug Buzz after a Hazard or two uh, is probably going to knock out Tapu Koko. So that's pretty insane. Uh, Volcarona is very strong. But anyways, um, Focus Sash allows me to Quiver Dance up on a potential switch to maybe Assault Vest Victini because Assault Vest Victini is probably one of his more obvious checks to Volcarona. Along with Toxpex, however, Psychic exists, so Toxpex isn't the greatest uh, Volcarona counter in the first place. Um, but anyways, if he goes into Victini, I set up a Quiver Dance. Now, it's a speed tie if he's Choice Scarf, and if he's Assault Vest, he can just go for the uh, V Create, knock me out, and take any hit. However, with the Focus Sash, I can take that down to 1 HP, 
set up another quiver dance, and then I can fire off a plus two swarm boosted bug buzz. And that's going to knock out pretty much anything in my path. Bar Toxpex, which will go down to a plus two psychic after hazards, unless he's super special defensive or Pyapa Berry or Assault Fist. So that's a pretty cool set versus team. And if I keep rocks off from the Crocodile, this thing definitely has a lot of potential to do work. Anyways, let's get right into the game. Alright, so here, uh, I'm going to point out immediately, no Crocodile, which means he has no Stealth Rocks, which means Volcarona is fantastic. <laughs> uh, I was really happy to see that on matchup, but you can see the six he decided to bring. I'm not going to list them out for you right now. Just know that he's not bringing Crocodile, and that's amazing for me. So... Versus this team, I definitely want to try to win with Volcarona because the Sash Volcarona is just uh, really tempting <laughs> to just kind of uh, play around with. And I really want Focus Sash Volcarona to do something. I, I think that would be really cool. So anyways, that's going to be my game plan going into this. Just prevent Toxic Spikes by having Dragalgy around and not sacking it. And just being able to clean up with the bulk late game, all I need to do really is chip down the Tabu Coco and then find a set of opportunity. And I guess sort of chip down the Tux Pex if I can to put it in guaranteed range of plus two Psychic would be useful. But anyways, I'm going to uh, go ahead and lead off with my Diancie. Uh, and unfortunately, I get the lead matchup wrong as he leads Shaman. However, I have a Ferrothorn with a lot of special defense, and I don't expect Hidden Power Fire on the Shaman. If anything, it's going to be Hidden Power Ice for my Lando T. But anyways, I'm going to set up these Stealth Rocks here. I could have gone for the knockoff for King Victini, and if I was going to go for an offensive move, it was going to be knockoff there. However, getting up the rocks is super useful, as he has three Rock Week Pokemon, and his removal is Avalug. Uh, I'm not expecting Defog Ments, but Avalug is a pretty bad Pokemon, so uh, it's going to be it's going to have a really hard time spinning, especially since Ferrothorn just comes in and sets him up again versus the Avalug. Anyways, versus Victini, I have to play smarter on this thing, and I figure he's probably going to go for the V-Create here versus my Ferrothorn, because I could have the Protect here, which would scout what he wants to go for if he's Choice Locked, so he can't really afford to just go straight for a U-Turn here. Um, he kind of has to respect that I could have Protect, and if he goes for a U-Turn, he kind of loses all momentum. But anyways, I'm going to make the switch out into my Diancy, and since I'm still in regular form, and I'm not a minus defense nature, it's going to bounce off. It's only doing 33%, which reveals he is max attack, but he's not adamant, I believe, was the calc that I learned from that. I'm not entirely certain, but um, here, I'm going to go for the Power Gem, and he reveals he's like max special defense Shaman, which is why it just does nothing at all. But here, I'm going to go into my Ferrothorn, because we've already established that this thing walls it and forces it out. And now, since I already have my hazards up, I can go for the uh, knockoff. And removing the item from Toxpex is really useful. Without Black Sludge, it's a lot easier to chip down with my Dragalgy's Thunderbolt, with my Vol uh, not Vol my Diancie's uh, Earth Power, that sort of thing. So that's really useful, as well as removing a potential Pyapa Berry, which he didn't have. But anyways, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight onto my Dragalgy. As he doubles into his Avalug, I'm not really sure what he expected, but he's just going to die to Draco Meteor, and that means that my rocks are up to stay. Uh, by the way, Avalug is terrible. I uh, just wanted to say that. Next up, <laughs> he's going to go into his Coco, and now, because I killed his Avalug, he might be thinking, oh, I'm probably Specs to Dragalgy, which means I'm forced to switch out versus a Coco. However, I'm Black Sludge, so I'm just going to stay and go for the Sludge Wave as he goes for the Volt Switch, and that basically uh, loses him the momentum that sacking Avalug gained him, because he's forced to go right back into his Tox Specs, and now I can go into my Ferrothorn. As he reveals the sub on Tox Specs, which is really weird, uh, I don't see that every day, but I'm going to go straight back into my Dragalgy. Uh, I don't have the minus two from Draco anymore, but he does get the burn, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt as he just goes for the recover to get back to full. But here I can go for the substitute, and that's basically going to allow me to get a kill versus his team. He goes for another recover, trying to stall out uh, the electric terrain boosted Thunderbolt, which would to it KO Tox Specs. Now here, I make the only play that I regret in the entire game, and that's going for Thunderbolt here. Uh, he was forced to switch out like 100%, so I feel like my play should have been Sludge Wave, which would have awarded me two kills rather than one, but I am just going to go for the Thunderbolt on the Shaman switch in, and now he's going to break my sub with an Earth Power as I go for the Sludge Wave. If I went for the Sludge Wave hard as he switched into Shaman, I basically got two kills rather than one, 
but I, we still get a kill, so it's not the end of the world uh, by any means. Now he goes into his Salamence. I'm going to make the play into my Ferrothorn as Firefang versus a Dragalge is not a play. At least it shouldn't be. And uh, here I can take the Firefang, and I kind of expected him to switch out into the Victini or just something in general. So I'm going to go for the Leech Seed, and even if he stays in and goes for the Firefang, it still works out for me as I can take... Uh, only 63% from that fire thing, and basically I get a free switch into my Starmie here because it covers every option. He can go for the fire thing again, or he can go for the dragon dance, predicting a switch out. Uh, be, if I want to save my fair throne, I'm going to switch out, which I do do. But I'm going to go into my Starmie, and it looks like he catches me with a dragon dance here. However, I am Scarf Starmie. I'm going to blow him away with the psychic and goodbye Salamence. And now. He's really far in the back. It's 6-3 at this point, and he goes into Victini, and he's kind of forced to make a play here. Although, at this point, I don't need my Ferrothorn. Dragalge uh, is able to take care of the uh, Tapu Koko, which is the only thing that Ferrothorn's really useful for at this point. Uh, so I'm just going to sack off my Ferrothorn, uh, and if he went for the Bolt Strike, I would have been able to get up a Leech Seed, and that would have been nice to get something out of my Ferrothorn, but at this point it's useless. Uh, not completely useless, but if the Coco is Hidden Power Fire, which it definitely could be, uh, if it's not Hidden Power Ice, it's definitely going to be Hidden Power Fire, then Ferrothorn doesn't have very much use anymore, so I'm just going to sack it off as he goes for the final Gambit, and now Dragalge is going to pretty much clean up this game, so I can take any hit from Coco. Uh, he goes for the Brave Bird, which is pretty cool. Uh, he could have been Scarf Brave Bird to revenge a Volcarona, which would be pretty cool. However, he sets up the Electric Terrain, and now Thunderbolt is going to be able to 2-hit KO the Toxapex, and that's going to be a good game. Unfortunately, uh, Scarf, or not Scarf, uh, Sash Volcarona wasn't able to do anything this match, although I think it's still a really cool set. Uh, Dragology just came in and won. So that's going to be uh, the top 16 match, and we do move on to top 8, so I'll be right back with that matchup. Alright, and we are back with our top 8 match up against Illusion. Uh, you can see his draft right here. It's very threatening and uh, definitely hard to prep for, especially in 15 minutes. But uh, we're going to look into the team of six that I decided to bring for this match. Uh, first off is going to be my Z Fly Lando T. Now, this thing is speed creeping a max speed Heracross, uh, which is Earthquake, Fly, Sword Stance, and U Turn. Now, Sword Stance plus U Turn is pretty cool as with a sword stance I can basically threaten everything and potentially force in something like the Gligar or the Necrozma. Now Necrozma, if I don't have my Z-move, uh, will be able to check me if it's Hidden Power Ice Defensive Necrozma, which is a possibility versus me. It also allows me to nuke everything as well as U-turn momentum is nice for a potential Hydreigon switch in or just uh, getting momentum in general. So that's going to be my Lando T set, a uh, nice max attack, adamant to do as much damage as possible. And yeah, that's pretty much it, pretty self-explanatory, it's a nice wall breaker. Uh, next up is my Volcarona, which is going to be a pretty fast offensive Volcarona this week. A uh, pretty weird set, uh, I have Quiver Dance, Will-O-Wisp, Flamethrower, and Bug Buzz. So if you look at his team, all I really need is my stabs to hit everything really hard. Now. His most obvious uh, checks to this thing is going to be uh, Specially Defensive Snorlax, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Specially Defensive Snorlax is the most obvious counter, as well as uh, right uh, Choice Banded Samurott, which will be able to knock me out with any prior damage. Without prior damage, I live the Aqua Jet. However, it's very difficult to set up without taking any damage because most people will stay in and attack Volk, as they should. Um, but anyways, so I kind of have a toss-up here. If I am Charty Berry, I'm able to potentially 1v1 the Snorlax a lot easier. However, if I'm Pasho Berry, I am able to not be revenged by any Samurott. And I decided to go with the Charty Berry. It was kind of a 50-50 decision, but that's the one that I decided to go with. If I could go back and change this, I think will o was kind of whack. I think Roost was definitely a better option. But uh, we went for will o it makes sense somewhat to catch the Snorlax on the switch in, as well as just kind of annoy his team. But anyways, that's going to be my Volcarona set. Next up is my Ferrothorn, which is going to be max defense, max HP with Leech Seed, Stealth Rock, Toxic, and Knockoff. Uh, knockoff is my only attack on this thing, which is kind of uh, 
It's kind of unfortunate because this means that Mega Heracross can sub up on me, and um, uh, that's pretty bad. However, um, I do have a switch in to Mega Heracross, quote unquote, switch in being my Lando T. Even though I'm not defensive, I can take any hit and outspeed and threaten at the next turn. However, um, it's not great to give Mega Heracross free, uh, free setup or free, uh, free subs. So I definitely have to play very carefully with my Ferrothorn. However, I did feel like this move set was kind of all necessary. I have Toxic for the Necrozma if it wants to be the uh, double dance set, as I don't have a Dark type. I have the Leech Seed for recovery as well as just chipping down his team, which is super nice. Uh, Stealth Rock is pretty mandatory versus his team. And um, Knock Off just allows me to remove uh, the 50% uh, berry from Snorlax, which if it is that, it can definitely just sweep through my team, which is very unfortunate. But I did feel like I did need those four moves, uh, even though Heracross can definitely take advantage of that. Uh, it's what I decided to go with. Um, next up is my Hitmonchan, which is going to be Life Orb. This is going to be another breaker to go along with Lando T. Uh, as Life Orb Iron Fist, Hitmonchan doesn't have very good switch-ins on his team. I am going to be running the Rapid Spin on this uh, for this game, as well as three attacks with Drain Punch, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch, which kind of hits everything bar the Necrozma for really good damage. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for my Hitmonchan. I am speed creeping the a mega hair cross and then just the rest into attack and then four in each defense just kind of simple stuff uh, next up is my dragology once again max hp max special attack because i didn't really need to speed creep anything and i am shook a berry to take an earthquake from the mega hair cross because that thing is a huge threat and i definitely want some text to kind of lure it in damage it and all that I am running the Shadow Ball basically exclusively exclusively for the Metagross, and Toxic Spikes are really nice versus his team, as he doesn't have a Grounded Poison type, and getting the Poison off on the Mega Heracross, the Samurott, the Necrozma, Snorlax, and the Tapu Koko is really helpful. So that's pretty nice. Dual Stabs allows me to have another check to Tapu Koko, unless it is like uh, uh, the Tapunium. Z, which is definitely a set that you could run to bring any switching down to 25% and then finish it off with the combination of Hidden Power Fire, Dazzling Gleam, uh, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, basically, it's a guaranteed kill for him, unless I go hard Starmie on it because I am Choice Scarf Starmie once again, but that's not a play, so it's basically guaranteed to get a kill. Uh, however, he does, he has shown to favor a uh, fairy. Fairy Z with the Z while uh, Z Dazzling Gleam Thunderbolt and Hidden Power Fire, uh, and then just the Thunderbolts and U-Turn. That that sort of set is something that he's shown that he really likes running. He's run it like multiple times in this tour and multiple times outside of this tour, so I am kind of very aware of that being a possibility. Uh, but anyways, uh, my last Pokemon is going to be my Scarf Starmie. Uh, this thing is Dazzling Gleam, Trick, Hydro Pump, and Psychic. Uh, Trick allows me to cripple a Necrozma that's gotten out of hand or the Snorlax that's set up. Uh, Psychic is my best way of hitting Mega Heracross. It's not going to Oko, uh, but it is going to do a lot. And I don't expect him to stay in with Mega Heracross on a Starmie anyways. But uh, anyways, Dazzling Gleam is for a potential Scarfed Hydreigon. And just stabs, hits the rest of his team really hard. Overall, that's going to be my team for this matchup, and let's get right into the game. Alright, so as you can see, he did bring the uh, Samurott, which is probably going to be Choice Banded, to revenge Volk as best as possible. Especially since it's that number one slot, it's definitely going to have a purpose, and checking Volk is a very good purpose. Uh, Tapu Koko, uh, Snorlax, Mega Heracross, Gligar, and the Hydreigon. So, here basically what I need to do is uh, but for Volcarona to win I need to get rid of Samurott or at least be healthy enough to take an Aqua Jet which means basically I need to be at full. Um, Lando T can definitely break holes through his team. Hitmonchan also has the same uh, opportunity. Starmie can definitely clean up late game. Volcarona can clean up. Uh, basically I have a few ways of winning but they're kind of hard to set up. 
But anyways, we're gonna do our best. He didn't bring the Metagross, which means he doesn't have a Dragon Resist bar Coco, which is not a Dragalgy answer. So Dragalgy is a really big threat versus him, so I definitely want to preserve that as well as I can and get off as many hits as possible with it. However, uh, he's gonna lead Heracross as I lead Starmie. Now here, I'm just gonna go straight for the Psychic, because uh, if he switches into his Dragalgy, that's gonna suck. However, uh, letting this thing stay in and just not take very much from a Dazzling Gleam. I believe Dazzling Gleam is only going to do about half to Mega Heracross, which is pretty crazy. This thing's really bulky. But Psychic is my best play overall, as he's actually going to stay in, surprisingly. Take the Psychic. Only does 66%, which means he actually would have lived a Life Orb Psychic. I don't know if he EV'd for that, or like, what. He actually, on that specific roll, he would have lived even Spec Starmie Psychic. So that's interesting crep. Allows him to 1v1. I'm not sure about that trade though, because Starmie was useful versus team, but Mega Heracross just kind of completely dismantled my entire team. So I don't know, I'm kind of happy about that trade, kind of like, I don't know, because Starmie was the only thing outspeeding Coco and Scarf Hedragon. So I guess the trade is kind of okay for both of us, not amazing. However, uh, I have the Volcarona in versus the Heracross, and he switches into Snorlax uh, to after I knock out the Heracross. So now I'm going to go into my Ferrothorn as he makes the hard read and fire punches me. And that's pretty bad because Ferrothorn being weakened means that my answers for a lot of his Pokemon are diminishing pretty rapidly. However, um, I am going to take this opportunity to set up my rocks, I believe. Or no, I go for the knockoff, getting rid of the 50% uh, berry, which in my eyes at this point of time was really important. As well as I could potentially remove an Assault Vest from this thing and that would set up Volk to win a little bit easier. So I felt like knockoff was worth Ferrothorn getting weakened, although I'm not sure about that in hindsight. But anyways, it is the play that I decided to make. And now I'm going to go into my Dragalgy as he goes for the Fire Punch. And now uh, I go for the Toxic Spikes because I didn't expect him to stay in, because Snorlax is one of the few things that can kind of deal with my Hydreigon. Uh, I know the Samrock can as well, but I expect him to try to preserve his Snorlax because it is pretty threatening versus my team. However, he does go straight for the Ice Punch versus my Dragalgy, and I'm just going to go for the Draco Meteor, get off damage, and Dragalgy is actually going to go down to this Ice Punch. So that's pretty unfortunate that Dragalgy didn't even get a kill. But now I can go to my Lando T and revenge this Snorlax, which is another threat out of the way, but now he goes into his Hydreigon. Now, um, I kind of expected a Fire Blast as... Um, either a Fire Blast or a Draco Meteor, as uh, it would hit my Ferrothorn. Actually, no, never mind. What am I saying? Ferrothorn's at like 20-30%. 20, so, uh, he could go for the Draco Meteor here, and I I didn't see a reason for him not to go for Draco Meteor. However, uh, I didn't want to just sack my Ferrothorn, because if he does go for the Draco Meteor here, I'm able to actually go into my Ferrothorn and go for a Leech Seed and try to heal it up. If you look at his team, he doesn't have that much for a Ferrothorn if this Hydreigon is Scarf Locked into Dragon Move. He's basically forced to switch out, and then I get my Leech Seed Recovery, and then Ferrothorn is back in business. So I'm going to stay in with my Landorus, as he actually goes for the Dark Pulse, does about half, and I crit the U-Turn, which is pretty unfortunate for him, but I mean, we take it. And I'm going to go into my Hydreigon, because, or I'm going to go into my Hitmonchan, because Dark Pulse is not going to do anything to me if he's uh, Scarf. So I am able to just take nothing from that and go straight for the Drain Punch. However, um, this is going to mean that my Hitmonchan is a little bit weakened, which is going to be pretty important for later. Well, I guess not too important, but Hitmonchan is at a range now where I cannot take a hit from Coco. If I was at full, I could definitely take a hit barring a Z move, so that would have been cool. But here, I'm just going to go into my Lando T, sacking it off as um, if he is Scarf Coco, which could be a set versus me, to revenge Volcarona with a Scarf Brave Bird, uh, then I get my Lando T in on a Thunderbolt, and that's basically my best uh, use of Landers at this point because it's kind of walled by Gligar, sort of because I can Sword Stance up and blow that thing away with the Sky Strike, but it's also it also loses to Samurott, so I don't see a big reason for keeping Lando T around. And he actually goes for the Z move here, uh, showing that he is Z Dazzling Gleam. He's able to knock me out. However, now I can go into my Volcarona, and this is kind of uh, my way of winning, is setting up with my Volcarona. And it's not going to be the greatest ever, because 
well, I'm able to get up to plus one. He does have the same route in the back, and even if he's not choice banded, which I do expect to be choice banded in this matchup, uh, he can knock me out with the Aqua Jet, which is kind of, I'm kind of put into a lose-lose situation where I can't really just, uh, I can't really do anything about it, unfortunately. So here, he's going to make the smart play and sack off his Gligar, keeping his Coco around, which is super smart. Now, um, he's going to go into his Samurott, and I'm actually going to uh, sack off my Volcarona. Now, this is kind of uh, bad for me. Uh, I definitely regret that play, because if I went into Ferrothorn on the Aqua Jet, which I knew 100% he was going for Aqua Jet, he had no reason to make any other play whatsoever. Uh, going for anything else was a choke. But if I went into Ferrothorn there, I'm max defense. I can go for the Leech Seed, and he's basically forced to stay in, because uh, if I'm able to Leech Seed up on the uh, Tapu Koko, what I can do is potentially stall out the Electric Terrain, then at that point my Volcarona would be able to live a Thunderbolt outside of terrain, and I would have been able to win if Samurott went down. So I definitely regret stacking off my Volcarona there, but I did it. It sucks. But now I can go for the Leech Seed because I know that he can't hard switch into his Tapu Koko because he doesn't know that I don't have Gyro Ball. And basically switching out is a choke for him. So here I'm actually just going to set up my rocks to get a little bit more chip on the Koko. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the Leech Seed because I want as much Leech Seed recovery as I can get. If I go for the knockoff, I don't get that 2% uh, along with my recovery. And basically if he's not HP Fire, I have a chance. I actually have a really good chance. Uh, basically it comes down to if he has Hidden Power Fire or not. But we're going to see he is packing the Hidden Power Fire and he knocks me out. The crit did not matter because I have no special defense investment. I'm purely physically defensive, and now Hitmonchan comes in, uh, and he knocks me out with the Thunderbolt, and that's going to be our Summer Showdown run. We did make top 8, which is really cool. I uh, definitely would have liked to go a little bit further, because we were just one round short of having an opportunity to get uh, one of the prizes, which I think would have been really cool. However, um, our run does get cut short by Mr. Illusion. Now here, I'm just going to go back here and see where I misplayed. Uh, here is one play where I was thinking it could potentially work out differently in hindsight. If I go straight for the flamethrower here on the Coco, uh, I basically put Coco in a range where flamethrower plus toxic spikes plus another round of toxic spikes will be able to knock him out. And basically, if I do that, then I would be able to have my Hitmonchan and my Ferrothorn versus uh, his remaining two Pokemon being Gligar and Samurott. Now, Ferrothorn, even though it was at 30%, would be able to take any hit from Samurott bar a superpower. Now, unfortunately, he did end up having superpower, but uh, I feel like my play should have been Flamethrower here, if anything. Uh, going for uh, Quiver Dance was kind of a choke. Not really a choke, though, because he still won regardless. But I kind of had to bank on him not having superpower on this thing, or at least uh, trying to force a situation where he doesn't go for it. Like versus my Volcarona, he wouldn't go for superpower, he would go for a water move and I could switch into my Ferrothorn, get off a Leech Seed, and his Gligar cannot touch my Ferrothorn, and a banded superpower would be doing about 70% to my Ferrothorn, uh, would be like a high roll, which means that if I'm able to Leech Seed up above 70% and I get off a Leech Seed, and uh, Coco goes down, then I would be able to win this game. However, that's uh, kind of grasping at straws and it's not very likely to happen. Another play would be, uh, so here. Uh, basically, it's kind of obvious that he has Hidden Power Fire based on the team matchup. What I could have done is tried to stall out uh, him using the Toxic Spikes by just switching back and forth. However, uh, I would probably would most likely die to this Coco before he dies, and he actually revealed after the match that he had Roost, so that wasn't going to work either. So overall, I kind of regret not taking those opportunities to at least try to pull out the win, but uh, the situation was pretty hard, and I feel like the matchup was definitely in his favor. So we do take the loss here, and that's going to be the end of our Summer Shutdown run. 
if you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>